Hello viewers, I'm Anita Narula, postgraduate teacher geography from Kendri Vidyale Air Force Station, Gurgaon. The chapter I'm going to take up today is for the students of class 12 from their geography book, India, People and Economy. And the name of the chapter is Land Resources and Agriculture. So dear children, in this chapter, we'll be discussing about what are the different uses of land and what different crops do we grow in under the different conditions in India. So first we talk about that what different purposes for the land is being used in India. So the question is, what do we understand by the word land use? So dear children, for the variety of purposes for which the land is used is known as land use. Now I must mention that what are those variety of purposes? Agriculture, pasture land, forests, construction of buildings, for construction of dams, or the constructions of roads, or playground, etc. So all these are the different uses of land for which the land is being used. Now, the land use records are maintained by land revenue. Reporting area is different from geographical area. So now we must understand that what is the difference between the reporting area and the geographical area. Dear students, reporting area is calculated by adding the land use categories and the geographical area is measured by the Survey of India. Now, what are the different land use categories? Forests, land put to non-agricultural uses, barren and wastelands, permanent pastures and the other grazing land, land under grooves, culturable wasteland, current fellow, and fellow other than current fellow, and the net area sown. Now, dear students, we'll be taking up all these categories one by one. Now, before taking up the categories, I would like to show you this visual. This visual shows the changes in the land use categories in India for the year 1960-61 and 2002 and 3. So, this is a multiple bar diagram showing the two different years under the different categories. So on the visual, you can see that the forest land has increased for the last these 40 to 42 years. So the another category where there is an increase is the area under the non-agricultural use. So when we say that the area under the non-agricultural use has increased, so that means we must think about that the types of activities the Indian people are taking up these days is also they are shifting from primary to secondary or tertiary activities. The fall in the certain categories for these years, you can look at the visual. If you see the permanent pasture land that has reduced in the year 2002 in comparison to the year 1960-61. And another, if we take up, the culturable wasteland has also reduced. So children, you must think about that, that what can be the reason for the decrease in the percentage of the land under the wasteland. So that means we are taking up all the efforts to improve the barren lands and bring that land under agriculture. So first, we take up the forest land. Now what is the forest land? The area classified as forest is that area which the government has identified and demarcated for the forest growth. And dear children, India has 23% of the land under the forest land. Now next land use category is land put to non-agricultural uses. So what are the non-agricultural uses, children? You must be knowing that the area 
besides the agricultural land where we are growing the crops, all other uses are non-agricultural uses. For example, the villages, the towns, roads, railways or industries, they are all under the non-agricultural uses. This area is likely to increase as the secondary and the tertiary activities expand and the relative importance of agriculture is reduced because in India now the trend if we see that the people are shifting from the rural areas to urban areas in search of the better employment opportunities. So that means we are shifting from the agricultural activities to non-agricultural activities and those activities they are known as the secondary or tertiary activities. Next land use category is barren and wasteland. So this category covers all the barren and uncultivated lands. So wasteland is uncultivated lands in the different types of the areas, maybe in the mountains, hill slopes, deserts or the rocky areas where the soil is not fit to be cultivated and such an area is known as the wasteland or the barren land. Next category under the land use comes that the permanent pastures and the other grazing land. A total of 11 million hectares is devoted to the permanent pastures and this amount to be the 4% of the total reporting area of the country. And what is the reporting area that we have already discussed that all the land uses put together brings about the reporting area. Next category comes of the culturable wasteland. So children, as the terminology says, culturable waste. So that means the Wasteland Survey and Reclamation Committee defines that the culturable waste is the land available for cultivation but not used for cultivation, maybe for one reason or the other. This land was used in the past but has been abandoned for some time and such a land is known as the culturable wasteland. Another category is the current fallow land. Now what is the fallow land? When continuously we have been growing a patch of land, we have been cultivating a patch of land, then it's quite obvious the land will lose its fertility. So for the regaining of the fertility of the land, we keep the land uncultivated for a certain period so that in a natural form the soil regains its fertility. So current fallow land is a land which is left without cultivation for one or less than one agricultural year. Fallowing is practiced to give rest to land. The fertility of the land is reduced when the crops are grown constantly year after year. When we say that the rest is given to land, so that means after the land gets a rest and the rest means it is left uncultivated. So that means the land recoups the lost fertility through the natural process and such a land is known as current fellow land. Next category is fellow other than the current fellow. When the land is left fellow for more than a year but less than five years, it is called the fellow other than current fellow. If the land is left uncultivated for more than five years, it would be characterized as the culturable wasteland. That means we will consider that land which is not fit for the cultivation. Net area sown is another category of the land use. So the cropped area in the year under consideration is called net sown area. This is as urgent need to increase the net sown area for meeting the food and the other requirements of the rapidly increasing population of India. Now on the screens you can have a visual of the composition of the total cultivable land. 
So all the categories are given over there and for the different years, the comparison is being done. And if you look at the last column of the table, that is the percentage of the total cultivated area for the year 60, 61 and 2002 and 3. You can see how much changes we can review on the table for these two set of the years. Under the cultivable wasteland, you see that there is a downward trend in the percentage of area, which is a good sign for the country like India, where we have the shortage of the land for the agriculture. So this trend shows that how with the passage of time our land use changes and the uses of the land that change according to the requirement. Now land use changes due to the changes in the economic activities and when we say the economic activities it may be the size of economy, the composition of economy and the pressure of agriculture on land. Now we'll be taking up all these three factors separately. One is the size of economy. The size of economies is measured in terms of the value of goods and services that grow over the period of time. This may be caused because of increase in population, improvement in income levels or the advancement of technology. Second factor is the composition of the economy. Economy is composed of the different types of activities, primary, secondary and tertiary. And secondary and tertiary activities grow much faster than the primary activities. And this process leads to the shift of land from agricultural to non-agricultural use. Third is the pressure of agriculture on land. Pressure of agriculture on land remains the same, although the contribution of agriculture reduces with time because there's a change in the set of the mind of the people because the activities also change. What is the common property resources? Resources we divide under two heads, private and common property resources. Private, which is owned by the individual or the group of individuals, and the common property resources are owned by the state and is used by the community. And the examples are forest land, pasture land, village water and water bodies, etc. And the last part which I'll be taking up for this section of the chapter is the intensity of cropping, which is very important because we have the shortage of land and we have to improve the intensity of cropping. So it refers to the number of crops raised on a field during an agricultural year. So now the question is, how do we calculate it? So this is the total cropped area divided by net sown area multiplied by 100. So this is how we calculate the intensity of cropping. So dear children, right now we have discussed about that what is the land use? What are the categories of land use under which the land is put? And we also talked about the property which is owned by the private people and the property which is owned under the common property resource. And as the need of the R is that we must improve the intensity of cropping from the same limited amount of the land and we have discussed that what is the intensity of cropping. And in the continuation of the chapter, we'll be talking about the different agricultural crops. Thank you.